Hey there everyone, it is Sean with Crafted Elements and in this video we're looking at our mosaic tile molds. Now of course these are kind of universal resin art molds, specifically for resin artists or people using jesmonite or even concrete. Heck, you could even put chocolate in these if you wanted to. Um, but the thing is these are going to give you the ability to make little equivalent shaped small mosaic pieces. You may end up using this to make say a tile mosaic or perhaps um, in the case of our pixel mold, maybe just want a bunch of quarter inch cubes to kind of mix all together and put in, you know, one of our larger uh, resin molds, you know, something like this, or maybe something like uh, this, you know, where you're actually gonna use these color coded uh, pieces of resin that you've made, pop them out and put them into a larger mold on a be part of a larger art piece. I'm really not a resin artist. I mean, I certainly do a lot of work with resin. I look, I do more woodworking and like conventional like making and stuff. Uh, so I've seen like some of our resin artist customers use our molds to make crazy stuff. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know you could do that. So take a look at these molds. You know, they come, they're all a quarter inch deep. Uh, we've got some hexagons. We've got some penny rounds, which are three quarter inch diameter. We got one and a half by one and a half inch squares. And again, we've got these quarter inch by quarter inch by quarter inch cubes. So you can make a bunch of cool things like that. So if you're doing like flower preservation or resin art um, and like different you know, plaques and stuff, I think you'll probably be able to find a use for the pieces that you're making out of here. Um, so I'm really just gonna kind of go over a general overview of these molds using the mold release. I've got some pre-mixed uh, resin. And of course these molds are only a quarter inch deep. So you can use pretty much any resin. You can use a casting resin, you can use a deep pour resin, you can use a tabletop resin. I'm using some uh, Total Boat Maker Epoxy, which is very similar to Total Boat's tabletop product. Sets up really quickly, 12, 24 hours, and I'll be able to pop these out uh, and do something with them. So I'm hoping at the end of this video, I will actually be able to show you what conceptually you could do with some of these pieces. But instead, I wanna stop blabbing, I wanna to get to my mold release, and I wanna start pouring, so you can actually see how these things work. And hopefully your like resin artist gears are kinda of spinning around, figuring out what you could possibly use these molds for. I'm sure there are other similar, like lower cost molds on the market, but they guarantee they are not built like these. They are very heavy duty. They're a 30 shore polished mold. They're heavy. They're not, we don't, we don't cheap out on silicone. We would rather make a big thick silicone mold and charge more for it than something that's gonna fall apart. But with that said, no matter if you're using our silicone molds or anyone else's or even a cheap silicone mold from Amazon, you wanna use a proper mold release because especially when it comes to epoxy resin, uh, epoxy resin ex is extremely corrosive to silicone. It really is. These molds, even with a proper mold release, are not going to last forever. But if you use a mold release like a non-silicone based mold release, like for example, the MG Chemicals 8329, you're gonna get 20, 30, 40 pours, uses out of these things before they start to deteriorate. If you don't use a mold release, you might get two or three or one use before you start ripping the mold apart. And again, that doesn't just apply to our molds, that applies to any silicone mold in the market. If you go to a silicone mold maker's website and they say, no, 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 you don't need a mold release, we have some sort of magic silicone technology, I can guarantee that is BS, okay? Silicone is silicone, resin is resin, or epoxy resin is epoxy resin. It's corrosive, you need a mold release no matter what, whose mold you're using. All right, so I'm gonna put my mask on, I'm gonna get my spray out, I'm gonna do my spray on, and then I'm gonna start pouring some of these colors so we can see what these molds are actually gonna be used for. So I switched over to a nicer view because you guys really don't need to see my pretty face um, when I'm doing this stuff. So what I've done, uh, I find it easy to get these like little disposable uh, condiment containers. You can get like a pack of I think 20 or 30 of them from Amazon for a ridiculously low price. And I find that these, this is way easier uh, than trying to like pour resin from a cup because you can just kind of squeeze it in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up all these containers with some of that resin I mixed up. A couple of reasons I'm also using these containers is because we want to kind of avoid overpour. I'm not going to be able to avoid overpouring this mold because I'm not going to sit and fill 300 little squares of epoxy. I'm basically going to pour the epoxy and squeegee it. Um, but just keep in mind that if you kind of do that method, that pour and squeegee and kind of layer out, you're going to get little fine, like a very thin film over the edge of all your pieces. You'll be able to demold it okay, but you're going to have to clean each one of those pieces up or at least crack it off. Or again, depending on your application, maybe it doesn't matter. But uh, it's just a warning for you that if you're going to do the overpour method and kind of squeegee off all the excess resin, you're not going to be able to uh, have like a perfectly, you know, finished edge on in these individual pieces. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start filling these guys up. And in this case, you know, this is some uh, honeycomb. So I'm going to make some honeybee kind of themed art here uh, once I actually demold these. But of course you can use hexagons or honeycomb shapes for a variety of things. Um, or like I said, you could put together a mosaic mural. Now the other thing to consider guys is like, if you are wanting to actually make like big mosaic murals or you know, big art projects with mosaics, whether using resin or jesmonite or plaster or concrete or whatever, you can buy a multiple of these molds, right? So these are, I think they're, some of the, one of these is 48, these are 50. I think this is the 48, that's 50, that's 50, that's 300. I mean, as in pieces per, per mold. So if you wanna have, if you're doing like a 500 tile art project, then you might wanna consider, you know, buying multiple molds. You can kind of do all these at once. Otherwise you're gonna be spending a long time making individual mosaics. Um, and like, you know, regular tile, regular porcelain wall tile, for example, you can use this stuff, uh, these finished pieces with, you know, mastic um, to actually attach them to a wall or use them as an accent piece. So if you're actually making legitimate tile for like a wall, uh, these molds will work as well. We actually have a customer that does um, terrazzo and they've actually ordered some custom molds from us specifically for making different shapes of floor and wall tiles so they can use their terrazzo resin to make samples for customers but also to make actual tile to lay on floors. So you know silicone molds have a lot a huge range of use of course um, not just for resin art but you know, that's our most of the time our customers are resin artists or woodworkers so that's kind of what we focus on and you can see that by using this squeezy bottle I'm avoiding pretty much all the uh, overpour kind of risks that would require me to clean up these individual mosaics. The other thing to consider is you may want to wish to dome the resin. Um, when basically doming the resin involves bringing the resin up to a little bit, like a literally a microscopic fraction of an inch past the, the height of the mold, that's gonna prevent that sharp meniscus and instead you're gonna get a bubbling kind of effect, like a doming effect, um, which is why it's called doming. Um, so that might be something to consider as well, depending on your ap actual application. If you're gonna take these and then sink them into resin or whatever else, it doesn't matter if it has a sharp edge on it from like the resin meniscus. But if you're gonna actually use them for, you know, a mosaic project or something, you might wanna consider doming them and bringing the resin past, just past the level of the mold so it doesn't spill out of the mold, but it actually creates a doming effect. All right, so I'm moving over to our pixel mold now. I've mixed up some more resin and I've tinted it with uh, Black Diamond's 24 karat gold color. So it's like a super bright yellow. And I'm just gonna kind of gently pour around here first, let some of it sink in, and then I'm gonna squeegee it um, or spatula it um, into the actual crevices and get it as level as possible. The more level we get this, the better that those pieces are gonna actually turn out. And if you've got excess resin on it, not a big deal, just uh, squeegee it right off the mold, off the side of the mold, clean it up later. The key is to get the best kind of performance out of this guy with these pixels, um, is to avoid having them actually stuck together with that top layer of resin. So we're gonna really get, you know, apply some pressure once it comes down to that to get rid of any connection that those pixels may have, because it's gonna save us time having to clean them up later. So now that we've filled up these 
um, mosaic tile molds. We're just gonna wanna hit them really quick with our heat gun. If you use a torch, just avoid keeping the flame on the silicone mold because it will damage the mold. Heat guns are always safer. Wear your PPE. I'm not doing it because I'm talking, but I do have my garage, giant garage door open. I got some ventilation here. In fact, I'm up here in Canada, so I'm actually pretty cold right now uh, with the garage door open. Um, but anyway, so just uh, a quick wave to get rid of all those bubbles that are coming up. And you might have to do this a couple of times. Whenever you're working with this super thick resin, when you've got that air entrapment from mixing it uh, initially, because it is so thick, you'll get those bubbles kind of coming up over the next hour. So you might have to do this another time, maybe wait another 20 or 30 minutes and then hit it again. So we are back. It is two days later. I could have technically demolded these the next day, but I just decided not to come to work that day. So I've got these uh, that we cast uh, our mosaic molds that we cast with our maker boxy and they are definitely fully set and we're just going to go ahead and do the magic demolding. I'm going to switch the camera angle so you can see just how easy this is and just how cool these things come out. All right, first one I'm going to do is our penny rounds. These are three quarter inch little rounds and basically we're just going to roll the silicone and get them all popped out of there. And you can see they're coming out really, really easily. Again, that's partly because of the mold release, partly because this is a smooth uh, polished mold. But before you cast uh, any more products in this or pieces in this again, you're going to want to just do a quick soap and water clean, let it dry, and then apply your mold release again. So, I mean, with these little things, what are they for? Well, they could be floor mosaics or wall mosaics, as I indicated. Or ideally, you could just use them as inserts or piles to put in your resin pieces. I'm going to grab our honeycombs, and I've got a little project over on the side of the table for this. These little extra pieces we can just bang off or shake the mold and you can see most of them actually just come off right like that. Anything else you can spray off with an air compressor or once you get it actually washed, that's the remnants will come off there. All right, now this one I'm not so sure about. I've never demolded this before. So in theory it should be easy, but let's, let's go. We're gonna get rid of all the junk around the side first that's uh, fallen out. So this doesn't end up in our pile. But ideally, we should just be able to kind of roll these out. See how it goes, I guess. Whoa! Don't get too aggressive because you don't want to rip your mold, but it is silicone, so it is flexible. These look like candy. I feel like I can eat them, except I'd probably end up dying. All right, we've got a big pile of pixels. And same thing here, we're just gonna kinda give it a quick shake and stretch, and we'll get rid of all the extra debris. And the rest of it will come off with some hot water and soap. Any of that uh, extra resin that's just kinda stuck there, we'll take it to the sink, hit it with hot water and soap, and most of that stuff will just peel right off. All right, so we've got a bunch of cool little blocks. I just kind of want to play with them. They're so, they're so visceral. Okay, let's get a project going with these things. So I know I beat this to death, but of course, if you want to make tiles, perfect for making tiles. But in this case, I'm going to do an actual project with this. I've cut a piece of wood, put it in one of our 10-inch round silicone molds, and I've just put an initial coat of clear resin on it, essentially just to solidify the thing so it doesn't move around. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take um, some of these hexagons, and make a hexagon pattern mosaic in here around or rather in the center of the bees with bees that I've actually laser cut in there and I'm going to use the rest of these kind of pixel chiclet things around here again it's really just showing that a lot of these things you can use in your resin art in a bigger mold whether it be a cross or if you're doing flower preservation you might want to use these uh, you know color match get color matched resin to match a certain type of flower or to offset a certain type of flower you know, all these things can be inserted into other resin projects. They don't have to be just used, you know, as mosaics or floor tile or whatever you're making, right? So I'm going to go ahead, change the camera angle again. Um, now, in this case, I'm actually, I could technically put a 
layer of say maker epoxy or tabletop epoxy or even well any epoxy down and actually glue them with that however i want to get this done today or rather get this last layer poured today so i'm going to use hot glue instead to attach these little mosaics to my uh, my wooden resin that's here already and then i'm going to backfill the entire thing with clear resin again completely up to you i'm doing that literally for speed just so i can get this project done and get this video edited but you could most definitely pour a thin layer of resin place all your mosaics come back the next day and then pour the next layer of resin but like i said i'm going to do it much quicker i'm going to do some hot glue stick them all down throw in my little chiclet pixel things and we'll top that with a nice clear coat of potable thick thick resin and the next day we come back and actually have